Welcome to St. Michael Albertville High School. A beautiful night for playoff football here. The first round of the Class 6A tournament tonight. It's the Wyzetta Trojans paying a visit here to the Knights. I am Jay Wilcox along with Ryan Iverson and obviously a rematch from the regular season here, Ryan. And both of these teams have had similar kind of up and down seasons a little bit, yet at the same time, I don't think there's anybody that feels that this would be an easy W to play either of these teams either at the same time. Well, I think historically you see these two programs and you think these two teams might meet in the semifinals of the state tournament, right? Both teams love to run the football, play really good defense, they're well coached. However, this year's been up and down. And losses against programs that both of these teams usually win. They met in week three. Uh, St. Michael Alberville came out in a win, 28-21. They threw the ball really well that game. Um, so it's going to be interesting. It's your first round of the playoffs. You never really know what to expect, but you got to bring it because there's always that fear, Jay, that this is it. This is the last game, not only of the year, but maybe for some some of these people, their career. Why well, is that a close the season with a couple of wins? So they feel like. You know, if there is such thing yep. as momentum carrying to the playoffs, they feel good about that part. Well, and I don't think that can be overstated. I think that's really important. You look at St. Michael Alberville, lost their last two coming into it, had a really uh, tough game going into this. So I'm a big believer. You want to be playing your best at the end of the year. So I think Wyzetta coming in with good momentum. They're throwing the football. They've been running the football a little bit better. They kind of have a three-headed monster in the backfield, so they got good balance. And momentum's a big deal. So I, I, I think we had something to take a look at today night as they start. Let's talk about key players to watch in this one. Uh, we're going defense tonight here and both guys have some similar stats and some similar things that they're good at, starting with Chase Ullum for Wyzetta. Well, I feel like he's been playing for like five years at, at Wyzetta. He just looks like a linebacker when you see him, but he is always by the football. So when you're calling the game tonight and you don't know who made the tackle, just say Chase Ullum. You probably got a good shot that, that it was right, but he's got over 50 tackles. He's their leading tackler. And again, tonight, when you play the Knights, you got to stop the run and force them to throw. So his run support, his run defense is going to be critical tonight. And for the Knights, we're going to talk about Caden Johnson, who's had a very nice year for them defensively. Yeah, just a really good athlete. You know, his dad, Mark, was an all-metro all performer back in high school, so good genes there. And he's just always by the football, too, leading tackler. He plays safety, so they're going to, again, just like STMA, you got to stop the run when you play YZ. So him coming up into that box and being a sure tackler, it's a, it's a something to definitely to, to key on tonight. Probably the most noteworthy thing lineup-wise tonight, STMA going with the new quarterback. A junior has been mostly playing their JV spot. Will Bartle, they, they just felt like a change was needed, yeah. and uh, he's going to get the nod tonight. Yeah, and that kind of tells you about their season, right? You're coming into the playoffs, and you're starting a brand-new quarterback. And uh, Coach Jared Essler for St. Michael Alberville, I love the call. I love, hey, anything I can do to spark my team, get us in positive plays, get us anything we can do to help, uh, you know, just kind of generate some more flow, some more offense. He's taking a shot, though. Your first start in the playoffs against Wyzetta. So we'll see if it pays off for him. And their former starter, Colton Damaris, is going to be playing some wide receiver tonight. And they said he's actually handled the news pretty well. And uh, they feel like yeah. he can help them in their game tonight uh, from that other spot in the slot receiver. Well, we'll see who moves on here. The winner will take on most likely Rosemount as they play Roseville tonight. And uh, we've got the Trojans and the Knights here on CCX Sports coming up next. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. And welcome back here for the Trojans versus the Knights. One of the probably more intriguing first-round matchups, I think. There's looking like there might be some possibly not quite as good games in the uh, 6A. As, you know, you might expect at times in the playoffs. And you get a look at the, uh, the bracket, all 32 teams is uh, interesting. Yep. You know, the, the top seeds, Maple Grove, Hopkins could be kind of ugly tonight. I would think Rosemont, Roseville probably could be fairly ugly tonight as well and well the first thing i look for is the teams we cover right what's their path i look at maple grove and i think they got a pretty nice path to get to that final four 
So, yeah, it's kind of we were just talking off air, Jada. It's like it's kind of anyone's game this year. I think there's probably four or five teams that feel like they have a legitimate shot to win the, the prep bowl. So it makes it kind of fun following in and uh, love having our number one seed from our, our area. And these two great programs, too, battling off. And that's the thing. When teams have championship pedigree, you don't want to see them in the, in the playoffs, even if they're having a down year, because you know they've been here and they've done that. Nate TV getting set to kick off here for YZ. And we've got Sam Anderson and Connor Longben waiting back deep. The two starting running backs as well for STMA. Stevie getting away a good kick all the way down to the one yard line. Good kick coverage as well as the Knights will not have all that great of field position and are up the 15 yard line. And sometimes, you know, you're so eager to return, Jay, but it's like maybe let that go, get it out to the 25. Instead, we have got a great special teams. And I'll tell you, both coaches have mentioned this too, but special teams will play a part in tonight's game, right? Punting, kicking, kickoff return. So getting that big stop, that's a, that's a good start for the Trojans. Look there, Lambert Brown, the Trojans head coach. And as we said, it will be Will Bartle getting the start at quarterback and has not played much this year on the varsity level. Uh oh, we got right guard jumping here. Sean Scripp for the Knights. So the first play will be a non play as, well, they're going to discuss. Was there any chance that uh, the defense got in there first? But I didn't think so. Yeah, will indeed be a full start there. And that's one of the things for both of these teams, Jay. They both like to run the football. You see, they go with the hard count. And I tell you, you got your nerves. You're excited. It's the playoffs. But getting these these penalties, moving backwards where they get long distances, uh, they're not built for it. Both of these teams want to run the football and set up third and short. On the 10, Bardo will roll left, pressure coming. He throws, it's tipped, and oh. almost <laughs> intercepted. Wow, as uh, threw into a little bit of traffic there. It was all of them that got a piece of that one, and it will fall incomplete. Boy, there was a little bit of heat coming yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. The number 44 was coming in on that Noah Weber, and he came in, and it, uh, he almost got home. That's a, uh... oh, excuse me, that was Adam Turney, I'm sorry. Tough play. You see, there he, there he comes. Adams coming and just got rid of it. That's a tough first pass rolling out to your left in the end zone with pressure coming at you. Lucky it wasn't intercepted. So a second and 15, and a run will go nowhere there as Keandre Watkins <laughs> getting the best of that collision well. with... Uh, <laughs> Getting the best, if he's in a collision, he's getting the best of it. He is 6'4", 210 pounds, and he's a freight train. And so now you've got to be careful, take care of the football here, but now you're starting to think field position if you're Wyzetta. Get your three and out, get, your, get the ball in a short field for your offense. No gain there for Ryan Cato, so third and 15 now. Bartle's going to hand it off here in a little sweep action. Oh, Longman nice makes a nice, nice cut. Move. Wow, they catch Wyzette off guard and down the sideline. Finally popped out of bounds into Wyzetta territory. Connor Longman, the 6'1", 185-pound senior, is committed to the University of Sioux Falls, and he pops a nice gainer of 45 right there. Yeah, he's their leading rusher coming in at 464 yards. And I'll tell you what, I love the move here. It's just a quick, they do a pre-snap motion, so you get that speed going. He gets to the outside, a great vision, cuts it all the way back to the right. What a big play, huge play, not only to extend the drive, but just to change kind of the momentum of the start of the game. Alex Hart knocked him out, but he kind of paid the price a little bit at yeah. the end, too, against a good size back. Unbalanced here. From the 45 of Wyzetta, Anderson will pick up a couple. Wrapped up for the Trojans by Dylan Schultz and Nelson Kurkowski also there. And you'll see the, the Knights do a really nice job. They'll go an unbalanced line where they bring an extra lineman to one side. And they're just trying to get a numbers game on you. More blockers than you have tacklers on that spot. And you can see right now only two linemen onto the right side. 
This play's going up the middle or to the left? Back to Anderson, trying to spin out of a tackle. He'll be a little short of the first down, but he'll leave him with a third and about a yard. After that nice gainer, as we look at the starters for these two teams, STMA will have quite a bit of an offense with a tight end in there. We haven't uh, listed Luke Vogel on there, but we'll see him number 49 quite often tonight as well, just depending on situation for the night. So after what looked like a very promising start defensively for Wyzetta, you had the uh, big long run ripped off by Longman, and now a third and one coming up for STMA from the 36 of Wyzetta. Keep it on the ground. Longman will have the first down with ease as he picks up about five. Trojans trying to rip it out of there. Ullum and crew getting the stop, but a nicely blocked gainer there for STMA, and they will have another first down here at Wyzetta's 31. Well, you said it. Look at the push by that offensive line. You're seeing a couple of guys firing off that ball. Mason Zimmer, number 72. Sean Script, number 60. Great push. And it's third and short, and you don't have contact until you're three or four yards down the field. You know your offensive line is doing the job. Opening possession of the night. St. Michael Albertville on the move at the Wyzetta 31. Play action this time, throwing deep downfield, and he overshoots Longbin. Back there, coverage wise, was Alex Hart. They've been running the ball and yep. then go to the play action, but actually pretty well covered, and, and you know, just through that ball a little bit long. They, as we were asking Coach Essler, you know, what does is, what is Will do well that you like? And he said he can throw the deep ball pretty well. And you can see Longman had the step there. But I'll tell you what, if you're going to miss, that's an okay miss. Deep and long, nothing short where it can be intercepted. I'll tell you what, when you're getting your first start, you get that first call to go deep. You got a little adrenaline pumping. But it was a great play call, and it was predicated on being able to run the football successfully. So a second down and 10. Here is Anderson. He'll pick up about three into the teeth of that. Why is that a defense? Well, I, you know, when the teams came out for warm ups tonight, Ryan, at least two guys were really excited with the weather, and that's both quarterbacks. <laughs> well, uh, playoff time in Minnesota, boy, you can get a lot of very crappy nights in there I, that we have exactly the opposite of that here tonight. I think we had about eight people excited, the, the quarterbacks, us, and our camera people, right? <laughs> I, you and I were talking before the game. I remember playing on this kind of a date back in high school. It was seven below, and that uh, that ball is hard. That uh, The turf is hard, so yeah, this is much, much better. Third and seven. Bardo will roll to his right. Now throwing in incomplete for Longman. Throw is a little bit high. Zach Boutwell closing and taking his legs out, but it, uh, the timing was, was pretty good, but the throw just a little bit too high. Yeah, you can see he's got a good arm strength, good velocity on that ball, but yeah, just a little bit high. But Boutwell right there, great coverage. And it would have been right at the first down marker had he caught it there. I'll tell you, when you got a new quarterback, Jay, you get him something easy, right? Get him a quick completion. Get him to get his rhythm a little bit. Almost like a shooter in basketball. Get a free throw, get a layup. Then the three-pointer starts looking a lot easier. They're going for it. I love it. Yeah, big fourth and seven here. A little too far for a field goal, but too close to punt. And they are going to run the play. Bartle, oh. a little wheel route here, and he's got Longman. What a Down call. the sideline, he's in easily for the touchdown. As soon as he faked that, I thought, oh, I wonder if Rizetta's ready for this because he kept going in the route. That was an absolute great play call. And that's where, as a defense, you got to have a linebacker or a safety matched up with everyone. you got to be able to account for everybody. They ran the play fake. All the momentum flowing to the right side, and they leak Connor Longvan out the backside. And not an easy catch. I know he was wide open, but that ball, you're kind of looking over your shoulder like that. Nice job corralling that in. And, and you can see Longvan really kind of the catalyst of this offense. He can catch the ball. He can run the football. And he had the two biggest plays of the, of the drive there, capping it with the touchdown catch. Jared Timlin in to bang the extra point through, and it's seven nothing Knights here with 8-11 to go here in the first. That's something that you can tell the Knights had seen on film, right? They had that play, there was no hesitation. And as soon as the quarterback rolled to the right, he knew exactly where he was going. He, they, they identified that in film this week. 
that that would be a potential play, and it's a great call, fourth and seven. Yeah, I think that's a great example of, you know, yes, it's a nice play uh, by the receiver and all that, but it was more scheme than anything that got that open, that where Wyzetta just yeah. didn't account for him once the ball was faked to him. Well, Jay, would you like to know that Connor Longvan was my neighbor, lived behind me when we lived here in Elberville, and I can attest that he would practice for hours and hours doing footwork drills out back, catching football. So I know he's put a lot of work in. You mentioned that he's going to the University of Sioux Falls. And uh, that was a big time play. A couple of big time plays on that drive. Did he ever knock on the door and say, Mr. Iverson, would you like to play football with him? Oh, I, we, I <laughs> definitely threw to him. And I mean, I don't want to take full credit for the, <laughs> for the success, but I did throw that route to him many, many years ago. <laughs> Timlin kicking it on the ground, and it's going to be fielded at about the eight yard line here for Eli Lenort. There's another one where, like you said, on the first kickoff, that ball sure seemed like it was going to go out yep. of bounds. That might have been. It's the hardest thing for a kid because they want to get a, make a play, you know. But, you know, let, let's go back to that score. Like, it's so important because now your, your offense, your defense comes out if you're the Knights and you got momentum, you got confidence. Think about, remember, it was third and, what, 16 to start? And it looked like the Knights were going to go three and out. Isaiah would get a short field, and then they a couple of big plays. So what a, what a momentum changer. That drive was. Cool. Heilbrunn on the YZ offense out here at the 21 yard line. First down handoff and nearly squirting out of there was uh, Dayon Loveless. Nice open field tackle, uh, but he'll pick up about eight. Yeah, there's Heilbrunn. 60% completion, 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns. He's got a great ball and he throws, he's got a weird angle on his throw. It's almost sidearm, but it. Man, is it accurate. He runs that play action, those slants to perfection. Nice tackle. Good, strong wrap up there for the Knights by Roman Lindenfelser, 5'10", 250, kind of a fire plug defensive yeah. lineman. I'll tell you, Deion Loveless is not a, a little guy, just under 200 pounds. and. You could see what Lindenfelser got on top of him. He was not going anywhere. The third and a couple, no gain on that last play. Keep it on the ground. Loveless has a gap to run through, breaks a tackle, and he's out just shy of midfield as he's finally ridden down there by Caden Johnson. Well, it's a good sign for the Trojan offense because they want to establish the run. Nothing fancy, the same play, all three plays. And a nice hole there, and look at the spin move too. He's, and again, remember they have three running backs, and they all get you know roughly the same amount of touches. And what it does, Jay, is it they they stay fresh, right? They'll they'll sub them every series. So you you got three running backs, all good enough to be the starter. Play action this time, and the pass over the middle is complete as he hooks up with Ford Griffith. And another first down for Wyzetta into STMA territory at the 36. So a gain of 15. There's that play action. Watch this delivery there. You see it, just that little sidearm angle, but he is so accurate on those throws. And if they can just do that every once in a while, mix up the run and the pass, tough to defend. Loveless will pick up about five on that one as we get a look at the Lineups here for these two teams with Wyzetta's first offensive possession. Again on the ground and Loveless tripped up after picking up a couple. A nice job tackling on that play by by Jackson Brooker. He's second leading tackler. Went low on that, able to trip Loveless up, but again, Wyzetta getting positive yards on first and second down. Third and a long three here for the Trojans. Heilbrunn faking now, throwing it out in the flat. Couple of moves and not gonna quite get there as Eli Lenort on the grab, but they never really opened up much space for him there. He it was, was trying to pick his way through. Yeah, it looked like he was actually set up to come back to the inside, and he looked, he saw a wall of blue defenders coming at him, 
That was just a heck of a job just to get positive yards out of that. He ended up getting three or four yards. Now you got this fourth and short. We saw the Knights convert a big fourth down and see if Wyzetta can do the same here. Loveless drops it. Ball's on the turf. Oh. It's going to be recovered by the Knights. They were going to get the stop on downs even if they didn't recover the football, but it's even more fun when you're able to pick it up there like uh, Jackson Brutker is able to do there. Yeah, he's a linebacker. He's got a nose for the football, that old cliche. We saw him make a couple of tackles there, heads up, getting on that ball. But yeah, you're, to your point, I think if, they, if, they were, if he hadn't dropped that, he was going to get tackled in the backfield there. So the Knights defense gives up some yards but gets the stop. You know, and that's uh, one of the things that Coach Lambert Brown has, has said to us multiple times this year is we got to stop beating ourselves. we got to finish. Ardell swings it out to Long Ben, shoved out of bounds there by Andrew Westermeyer, but nice play to start the drive here as they just swing that ball out in the flat. Pretty safe play. I mean, it doesn't get yeah. a ton, but it gets about four. No, but, you know, he threw his touchdown pass the last drive, so he got his completion. You got confidence. You got a spark going. The whole offense sparked. You know, that was one of the things last couple of weeks, especially last week, they just felt like they were struggling to score and to sustain drives. Now you got a quarterback who's made a couple of plays and feeling confident. Anderson took a pop there oh. from Ullen. Ball might be loose. Why is that a saying they've got it? And it looks like they do. I haven't seen a signal yet. Yeah, he's saying it was, the ball was down. Oh, yeah. Trojans. We're pretty sure that they're going to get that one as Cherney wound up with it, but hard to tell in my initial well, look when it came out. And our referee in the stands there for Wyzetta did not agree <laughs> with that call. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a look at it here. Get another play right up the middle. Anderson gets it. Let's see if we can see when that ball came out. It was kind of hard to see in the pile. Oh, looks like it was on yeah, the way it was, out. It was coming out. He was trying to yeah. keep it on his forearm there, but it seemed to be coming loose. Bartle dropping to throw deep down the sideline. Very well yeah. covered, though. There was not any room really to get that one into Alex Swatkovich. Yes. Good uh, defensive coverage there by Noah Reagan. Yeah, and Swatkovich has been their leading receiver on the year 27 catches and again like you said that was not a bad throw he put it where you wanted to but just really well covered by Wyzetta and so they're going to hold here after turning the ball over with a fumble they get a three and out Ashton Groves on to punt Nort back step up and field it on the 32 gets by the first wave a little spin move and out to about the 47 so a nice return of 15 or so. And Wyzetta will have excellent field position just shy of midfield as they get the football for the second time. Trailing at 7 0 here. 3.46 to go in quarter number one here from St. Michael Albertville. First round of the Class 6A playoffs. Yeah, been a pretty well played game so far, too. I mean, some big plays. And I just had the one penalty, one turnover so far. And. I think the, the biggest play, I mean, obviously the touchdown's but big, but down, yeah, right? when they, that, when they were, I think that really changed the momentum yeah. of this game. You're absolutely right. Looking like the Knights were struggling to start that first drive. Loveless caught from behind here. Or excuse me, not Loveless that time as they got uh, Madcore in there. And brought down by Purcell of the Knights. Yeah, Madcore, Omar, second leading rusher, 444 yards, five touchdowns. So he's part two of that three-headed running back group. And trying to step out <laughs> of the like leg still trap kept those there. Legs going. <laughs> Jackson Brutker had a hold of his leg, and it was like he was caught in a trap there and trying to get out. Well, just some great power. And you see, you know, I talk about it often during broadcast, but... You see those running backs that keep those legs moving. You can break some of those arm tackles. And a great job by Brooker to hold on there, but still got an extra yard or two. Leave them with third down and four coming up. 
Is that a little slow to get to the line here? See if they have to be thinking about getting the snap off in a hurry. Kyle Brown play action has plenty of time throwing deep oh, downfield. Yeah, just really breaking free into the open there for the Trojans yeah. was Tyler Milkus, but not quite able to hit him. Yeah, Milkus has that great speed, and I'll tell you, it looked like they got mixed up a little bit. It looked like, you know, Heilbrunn was expecting him to go more vertical, and Milk is kind of running more of a slant. Do you see that? And I wonder if they just had a miscommunication on the route, but fourth down, they're going for it. Oh, oh, oh. a little quick kick instead. Heilbrunn trying to oh. bounce one down deep. Instead, it's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. You don't see that too often anymore. The well, usually you'll see him get a little bit more depth, like an extra yard or two, and that was your normal shotgun. So it was the right play. And that one, if you can angle it a little bit more to the corner on a lower bouncer like that, maybe pin him in. But either way, nice play. Amber Brown, head coach of Wyzetta. Yeah, he said uh, been making progress for the most part but like you talked about earlier they he said you know even going back to the first game here he said we had some drives that we just didn't finish and yep. kind of shooting ourselves in the foot at times well and remember too they they had maple grove up at halftime you know so they were they've been right there they got to finish drives finish halves finish games oh bardo heavy yeah. pressure got rid of it trying to hit long then but he took a hit as he got rid of that football why is that a Sending pressure and Knights probably fortunate to just have a routine incompletion there. Yeah, and that was Watkins again, just coming free, putting the pressure on. And I'll tell you, that's one way you negate quarterbacks, right? We, we've seen Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. If you can get a pass rush on a quarterback, it's you just got to have enough time to let your receivers do what they have to do and get space and get open. Second down and 10 play, handoff here, and not anything developing there at all. Nice job by Richlick, number eight there, just really stood him up. There was just no gap to go through. Longvin had to put on the brakes pretty much right after taking that handoff. Yeah, when that initial, yeah, that initial gap is closed, there's just nowhere to cut, right? So you want to be able to at least get your running back a seam to get to the line of scrimmage, and then they, you know, we've seen Long Van with his vision, his ability to cut. You just got to get him in daylight. And now you got kind of a, a known passing down and distance here. Look for screens, play action, something like that. Third and 11 here for Bartle and the Knights. Going to sling it out in the flat. And ah, Kavich close. is tackled there by Alex Hart. Let's see where they'll spot this. Looks like just short. Yeah, they did get 10 on the play, but they needed what, 11 after that short loss. What do you think? Like, I know that the book says you punt this, right? It's a short field, but like a half a yard, I, I just feel like go get me a half a yard. Quarterback sneak that. Yeah. And maybe they, they might go hard gonna, count yeah, here. Yeah, going to try and draw them off, I think. I'd have a hard time believing they'd actually go for it. I'm going to have to be consistent in it because I ripped P.J. Fleck for going for it in the similar spot well, it's, a couple it's one, weeks it's ago. It's one thing, I mean, it, it, that's college and that, you know, if it's fourth and a yard, fourth and two, but when it's that half a yard, you know, they're about a full yard short. Yeah, I like the idea there. Try to get, uh, see if you can sneak a, an offsides penalty, get a free first down. Absolutely. I don't know, though, just if something doesn't go right no, to give you're, them you're, that it could, And then it could be is, what, what ended up losing you the game. I get that part of it, but I just feel like. Yeah, I, I agree in principle, but if they were like 10 yards farther out, I would I would a little bit more, second, yeah. second the, the, and, a little and, more. And where they spotted it, it looks like it's a full yard. At first, I thought it might be, you know, a foot. But, yeah, I see it at a full yard. It's one of those where, as a coach, you're like, let's just do it. I can't do it. I want to do it. I can't do it. Groves on to punt here. A very high yeah. kick, fairly short, but a fair catch called at the 39-yard line there. 
I, uh, Lenore? I still maintain, Jay, that's one of the hardest things to do in any sport is catch a punt when you got guys running full speed right at you, ready to, to hit you, even on a fair catch. You know, but in the back of your mind, you're thinking, I hope they saw my fair catch, right? And it's... It's not easy, so I have so much respect for, for punt returners. And it's so different from catching passes from your quarterback. I mean, you can see even really good receivers who struggle to just to track the ball yeah. on a punt, yeah. too. Yeah, not easy. Let's see if Wyzetta's offense can, can get on track here. Move the ball in their first drive, but just couldn't finish it. Heilbrunn will hand off to Loveless, and he breaks free up the middle and finally tripped up there. Nice tackle by Zach Purcell, but... Nice gainer there of about 19 for Loveless. Yeah, he's got a great burst. Watch him kind of slow down, find the hole, and then bam, he hits that north and south really, really quickly. He's got those big, strong legs, too. Under 40 seconds to go now in the first quarter. Knights leading it 7 to nothing, scoring on their first drive. Wyzetta trying to put a march together here, though. Melbrun play action. Now running out of time, gets the nice pass, but quickly covered up there as Purcell making another stop as he's able to get to uh, Tomzik immediately. Yeah, kind of a long developing play just to get back to the line of scrimmage, but Purcell, I feel like we've called his name almost every tackle. He's all over the place tackling. And even though you didn't get a big gain there, Jay, you're completing a pass, and you just got to mix that balance up just enough to keep a defense honest. So we've reached the end of the first quarter, and it is seven nothing St. Michael Albertville after one. The second quarter coming up next here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. St. Michael Albertville leading Wyzetta by a score of 7 to nothing tonight. And we're happy tonight to partner with the Wyzetta Boosters who helped us out with the uh, section fee here for televising live here tonight. We thank all the parents, sponsors, and the community for supporting YZ Athletic Boosters that supports the student athletes. Their mission is to sustain and promote ongoing participation of YZ High School youth in quality athletics. And they'd like to thank their sponsors, including Kelly Brown Real Estate Group, Keller Williams, Twin Cities Orthopedics, State Farm Agent Katie Halpin, and the Gross Clinic in YZ. Yeah, pretty cool of them to do that and allow us to, to be live. And as you were giving that uh, read, another big run tacked on by Loveless again. You, you feel him starting to get stronger as this game has gone on. And if he can just find some seam, get through that line of scrimmage, he's able to, to get those extra yards. They go back yeah, to him again head. here, and he has popped pretty good and knocked back. Yeah, nice tackle there. Sotomacchio came in there, lost his shoe, still got in there to, to make the tackle. Got about a yard on that last gainer here, so football resting on the 30 of the Knights, second and nine for Wyzetta. Heilbrunn handing off. Loveless has a big gap straight up the middle, stumbles a little bit. And then is brought down just inside the 15. So he'll gain another 16 yards there. And uh, this is what I said. talking about. We can drive the ball. We need to be able to finish. Yeah. And that, that's going to be kind of the key. I mean, it, it's kind of a cliche to say you got to finish drives. But it, it's very true. They've shown an ability to move it, but still have a zero on the board, at least for now. Yeah, nice block by Manny Wilson there. Blocking down, opening that hole. Loveless again, this time. Pretty well defended as he's what, brought down by Purcell. What's interesting is Wyzetta, Jay, they're they're in their formation, and then they look over to get the play, and on that, that big run, STMA, I think, was setting up. They thought a pass was coming. They dropped a uh, safety out of the box, 
And then Wyzetta actually came back with the run. So it's kind of a little cat and mouse game going on here between coordinators. Second and nine now for the Trojans. Heilbrunn throwing, it's complete for the touchdown as he's able to zip it into Fort Griffith after the play action fake. Yeah, great call, play action, and all it takes, Jay, those two inside linebackers take that one step up, and you got a nice seam there, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Griffith with his third touchdown of the year, and again, showing that accuracy, was, was uh, Heilbrunn there, just a beautiful throw. And that was a great drive, a good mix of passing and, of course, really good running the football as well. Extra point try is up and good here for Stevie, and the Trojans tie it up here early in the second. 10.05 to go in quarter two, and here it is, the quick slant. Not too bad a coverage, nope. but just not enough to break it up. A yep, little play action, and I'll tell you, when you run that slant one on one, that quarter, that cornerback is always going to be a step to the outside. And if you don't have that safety help or a linebacker in that passing lane to be able to alter the pass, it's almost uh, um, impossible to defend. Look at all the space there; no one else there to help him out. Well defended, but just a great throw and a great catch, and then a nice twirl too at the end of that. <laughs> Not sure what that. Uh, we're gonna have to work with the celebrations. Those are the kind of plays that you work on in practice, and, and what you really want is your guys to simulate it as, as though there is a defender there so that your timing gets yep. really down where it's kind of like second nature. Well, um, but not much room yeah. to run as they kind of pin him to the sideline there. And the key was that they had multiple receivers to the left, so as a quarterback, you're seeing, you know pre-snap, you got the right coverage and the one-on-one -on -one there. And then you just have to sell that play action, and then you got to deliver it accurately. And he certainly, Heilbrunn did that. That was really well executed. Knights will have it on their 24 as we're now tied up at 7 to 7 here early in the second. Bardo will hand it off. And a pickup of a couple. Kadia taking that hand off. You see uh, big Noah Toby. A little shaken up. Joe Dewar, that is, yeah. We get, we get fooled occasionally by the double numbers. <laughs> it, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a, he's the center, too. Center is such an important part of that offensive line, not only snapping the ball, but kind of the leader of that group and making sure you're, everyone's in sync. And Will Bramos is going to come in and, and play center, only a sophomore. So that'll, that'll be something to keep an eye on. Jared Esler saying that they uh, mostly pretty healthy on the line. As you were mentioning him earlier, that they'd had an injury on the line during the regular season game with Wyzetta, and I think that was script, but he's back. But now they're having uh, Joe Dewar hobble to the yeah. sideline. They got three on that first down play, so second and seven coming up for St. Michael Albertville. And... They're looking back. They're subbing guys in, and they're going to have to use a timeout yep. or else hurry this one up. They're going to use a timeout. Sometimes after an injury like that, you one know, guy replaces here, and he, yeah, you, know, you get. You and it also felt like they were just kind of a little bit slow getting back to. It. I don't know if they didn't realize that the ball was, you know, chopped ready for play. And sometimes the timing gets a little weird on those. So, yeah, it'll be. A, that could be a big, a, a big loss for the Knights. When you lose your center, hopefully it's nothing uh, nothing serious. He's able to come back in. Yeah, 
And there you see Colton Damaris, number 17, uh, the quarterback for, for most of the year. And I'll tell you, we, we talked to, to Coach Essler, and he just said, hey, that's not an easy conversation to have. But he said, you know, Colton, without a doubt, said, hey, anywhere I can go to help the team and willing to, to go play receiver. And he's got really good height. He's got good hands, a really good basketball player as well. Yeah, and he, he talked about being a an effective blocker and yeah. from a slot spot tonight too. And obviously that's a pretty good sized guy that you can yeah. throw out there to take on a linebacker or whatever. Long been taking it on that little sweep action oh this my. time. Well played though yeah. by the Trojans. Ullum and company closing it down after a gain of a couple. Yeah, set the edge, got the cutback, and all of them was flying down the line. That's a great tackle. The new center in replacing Luke Sippel sliding over from yeah. guard. And didn't have a lot to do on that one as he ran the no. other way. But uh, No, but I'll tell you, it's different because your timing's off, right? Now you're snapping. Your your footwork's a little bit different. So, it you know, it, it can definitely throw things off. Here they're going unbalanced to the right side of the line of scrimmage. See why Zeta shift over. Bardo play action wants to throw deep a double coverage there was not any room to get that one along but couldn't have asked for better coverage from the Trojans. No nope. great job by Boutwell just staying deep. You know and that's something in the first game these two teams played Jay Wyzetta gave up a touchdown pass right before the half that really changed the momentum of the game and they're on third and long really really just staying home being disciplined. And, and understanding too that Connor Longvan is the guy they want to try to get the ball to and knowing where he is at all times unlike the touchdown where they let him kind of slide out of the backfield unimpeded. Groves again with a high punt. Trojans will back away from it and it's down on the Wyzetta 33 yard line here so Wyzetta gets the football back after scoring last time and their defense comes up with a quick stop and they'll have an opportunity here to try and grab the lead for the first time here at 7 7 8 33 to go in the second quarter here first round class 6 a playoffs yeah it'd be interesting to see if they leave uh, Dion Loveless and he had so much success in that last series running the football yeah and there, there's Loveless coming back and really nothing fancy just right up the middle Line doing a nice job of opening up a seam, and then Loveless really doing a nice job of breaking free. Brought down at the 45, a gain of about a dozen. Yeah, watch how hard he hits this hole, too. A little bit different play there. He gets his momentum going to the left, well blocked, runs through some arm tackles, and then a nice tackle there by Caden Johnson bringing him down. Man, 10 yards a pop. He's got multiple runs of over 10 yards already in the first half. Back to Loveless here, picking his way through a hole and then took a good hit, but still a nice gainer there as he was popped by Cowan Underwood. Yeah, and just real subtle footwork too, Jay. You know, you're not seeing these big time cuts, but just kind of twisting his body, contorting and then keeping those legs moving, he's able to run through that contact. Yeah, you don't always think of, like when you're first talking about what a running back's good at, patience, but sometimes that's a valuable skill as well. Heilbrunn throwing, and let's see, they're gonna call it incomplete. It was added for a moment there, Griffith. I guess why is that in a way fortunate that it wasn't yeah. called a completion though, it would have been a fumble loss there. Look, I was just about to say he's got it because he, yeah. he was borderline. I mean, he almost had it long enough. And again, I mean, you know, you think back to Wyzetta's state championship from a few years ago and the last couple of years, so accurate on those quick slants, but it's all set up on being able to run the football. And they, again, oh, nice cut. Come right back oh. to Griffith here, breaking into the clear and finally brought down at about the 12-yard line. They'll pick up 35 more. And an easy throw, a quick throw to the outside. I'll tell you what made that one, Jay. Watch Griffith as soon as he catch it. Watch the move coming back to the inside of the field. I really think SGMA thought this was going to be run on third and yep. short. And again, I mean, 
Just a beautiful move, and Saltamacchio was playing the outside. Look at him spin back to the inside. That was a quick move. Blocking downfield, too. Back to Loveless here. And Knight stack him up. I, looks like no gain on the play. But I've always maintained why Zeta Jay, when they get balanced, when they're able to mix a little bit of throwing, and then, of course, establishing the run. When they can establish the line of scrimmage, they become an offense that's really hard to deal with. Second and 10. Go to Loveless off the left tackle. Oh, and tackle. Wrapped up there, yeah. met by Rutger. Yeah, I'll tell you, it looked open there. It looked like they had a, a, an alley over there. And then Brucker just came, and that was a very nice tackle. Did pick up three on the play. I didn't think he got quite yeah, that much. Yeah, it almost seemed like it was a yard at the most, but yeah. So it will bring up a third and seven here for Wyzetta. So we passed the halfway point of the second quarter. Wyzetta and the STMA tied at seven. Yeah, watch the left of your screen. You got Griffith again in one-on-one -on -one coverage. You see two receivers down here to, the, to your right. Looks like they might yeah. be going to ask for a timeout here. And Will, I don't think they got, maybe weren't, everybody didn't seem to be exactly sure if that, you know, is this the play we like against yeah. this look or not? Well, I'll tell you, what'll be interesting, Jay, is do they view this as four down territory? Because if, if they don't get it, then they're comfortable kicking a field goal, then you take a shot here. But if you think, hey, you know, we're gonna go for it if we can pick up four or five yards on this, then you got the run game still in play. But I'll tell you, it'll be interesting to see how they, what kind of lineup they come out with because if they can get Ford Griffith in one-on-one -on -one coverage, I wouldn't be surprised to see another play action with that slant that they threw for the first touchdown of the game. Yeah, you can't ask for better weather on a <laughs> last Friday of October. The 50s, not very windy. Good crowd. Look at that, I'm part meteorologist. I was guessing, and <laughs> sure enough, it's in the 50s. Not much wind. Yeah, honestly, I think I feel like the wind is even more of a factor yeah. than the decent temperature because yeah. wind can really play havoc on the passing game, the kicking game, and just make you feel a lot colder overall too. They are going to go to Loveless on the ground, and he is met and dropped. Boy, another solid tackle there by Brutker. And he will stop him, obviously, way short of the first down, and actually no gain even on the play. Surprise you that they ran that? I, I, I'm not because I thought, I think they were expecting to get four or five yards on it and then go for it on fourth down. I think because they didn't get anything, they got a very reliable, uh, good kicker, too. And, uh, Stevie yeah, coming Stevie. on. Yep. This will be a 26 yard attempt. Yep. Plenty of leg. It looks good, and it is. So a field goal for Stevie and Wyzetta with 5.02 to go in the second will take the lead 10 to 7. Yeah, and even though you didn't you know, get into the end zone, you, you got points up and you had some good success. You moved the football. And I'll tell you, when you're on the road in a playoff game, if you can get points and take the lead, you take it. Especially the way their defense has played the last couple of possessions, too. You know, this is this is a game where I think you trust your defense. Points are going to be at a premium. So when you got an opportunity, and I'll tell you what, that would have been good from about 45. That was plenty of leg. Wow. Good feeling that, you know, let's be honest, probably at least half of high school teams just kind of cover their eyes when they attempt the <laughs> field goal. Just, yeah. And not even just the kicking part, yeah. but just the whole rest of it, too. And, and it's so important, right? I mean, it's it's a big deal. Extra points. You know, if you can get a field goal, too, that's uh, it's points, and they add up. Long been brought down shy of the 20 here is another good kickoff. Just fielded you know, right at the one again. Yeah, yeah, just deep enough that... You pin him in there, but not an obvious, you know, touchback situation. So 
Yeah, it'll be interesting too, Jay, because kind of, you know, the Knights had that opening drive where they scored, got the momentum, and then YZ really has kind of taken control of the last few possessions here. So I think it's a big drive for the Knights. And maybe not to get points, but to, to get a couple of first downs at the very least and maybe shift the, the field position. They'll start on their 18. Ardell's going to hand it off to Long Ben. Broke through a tackle. Oh, yeah. Wow, good leg drive yep. there out to the 25. I was but to just say, about to yeah. say he was going to be stopped right away. And he said, uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't look like much opening there. Kind of slowed down, and then he just burst out of the pile. And those are big because now, you know, instead of second and ten, now you got second and three, second and four. A whiteout. We got a whiteout tonight. I was wondering if we might see some Halloween costumes. I didn't, uh, just at a quick glance, I didn't see too many. I thought close enough that we probably would. I, I, I'm going as a chubby broadcaster. <laughs> I, I hope my costume worked out. Long been on the carry there, but wrapped up. Nice job by Cherney getting yeah. him around the leg there, so no gain. Yeah, I'll tell you the linebacking play for the Trojans with Ullum and, and Cherney, number 44, is, is really about as good as you're going to find anywhere in the metro area. And those two guys are great wrestlers too, yeah. and this has become a big rivalry in wrestling. Standing in the way at section time every year for YZ is St. Michael Albertville. Yep. And, and being honest, every year it's STMA wins, yeah. but yeah. It, it, the gap has been narrowed, certainly. Yeah, wrestlers just make such great football players, that low center of gravity, that power, that toughness. Oh, good cut. Trying to keep yeah. the legs going, wow. Great that was cut. A, and then good finish to have some strength to the run as well there by Anderson. Yeah, that ball, he was going to his left and he just made a business decision. Slashed it back to the right. Watch right there. That's a great, great vision, great cut. And then it was uh, kind of one on one there with yeah. Boutwell, number two versus number two. And he drove Boutwell yeah. back a little bit, but he held on tight. I think number two won. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Third first down for St. Michael Albertville. And first in a while, like yep, you said, they'd, yep. they'd been uh, needing some momentum back. And I go back to that long van run where it looked like he wasn't going to get much, able to get five or six yards. Ardell dropping the throw, slinging it out, and it's incomplete. Odlin had it briefly, but couldn't hang on as he was well defended. And interesting that, you know, Coach Essler, we were talking before what they did well the first time against YZ, and he said, I expect that we'll see a little tighter coverage tonight, though, yeah. especially, yeah. you know, if they watched film last week where we struggled against that with yeah. Eastridge. Yeah, and in, in the first game, I mean, those quick hitches were wide open all game long. YZ are really playing about 8 to 10 yards of, of comfort, of cushion there. And that time, again, well covered. And you've seen some of those shorter throws, great velocity by Bartle, but a couple of them just a little bit high, too. So second down and 10, going to throw again here down the sideline and incomplete. When Kavich didn't see it coming, he was blanketed pretty well there by Hart. Yeah, it looked like a good ball, too. I think it was kind of right over his head. Maybe just, the, and that's where having a new quarterback, right? The timing may be a little bit different. The release point a little bit different, so you don't pick it up. But pretty well covered, but not, not a bad throw either. The problem is when you when you throw on first and second, you don't get it. Now you're in this 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 third and long. And the other thing is you don't use any time up. You might get yeah. out of the ball back with a decent amount of time here if you have another incompletion here on third. So they're going to go toss sweep instead. Anderson wow. popped. Wow. Nowhere to go. Wyzetta not really fooled by nope. that. You know, you obviously think of it as a passing down, but. Well, remember that third and long on the first drive? They went with a toss sweep and got the first down. And that time, I'll tell you what, Noah Richlick did a great job of just setting that edge. You know, just saying you're not going to be able to get to the outside. And you saw the good team speed running down the line. And was that it gets a stop here? And they're going to have plenty of time and pretty decent field position, too. Groves on to oh, punt. punt. Man. Fair catch call, but then it got over his head. And it will be back down 
about the 22-yard line of Wyzetta, so not quite as good a field oh. position. Uh, I think they're oh, they blew the down. whistle. Yeah, not a bad idea to grab it and go. And unfortunately, we have a knight holding his knee there, Jacob Bateson. Forty-eight yards on that punt. Great punt. As you see Bates in there, looking at his uh, looks like his knee. out what happens and kind of in the middle on that punt coverage. You see him and running in the center of the Yeah, this looks like here. a non-contact kind of situation, doesn't it? Yeah, he oh. just plants and grabs the knee. Yeah, it just looked like he was about to turn and pivot, kind of going to the left, right? There. Oh. Yeah, might have been a little knee yeah. buckle. And I'll tell like. you, sometimes with those knee injuries, they're non-contact, right? It's it's how you land, it's how you plant. You're going full speed like that, so uh, you hate to see that. Looks like they're gonna get him up here. And yeah. At first glance, though, it looks like something where you're probably not gonna be able to come back. No. But I, I just, I, I hate seeing knee injuries on young kids. There you can see him right in the middle, number 35. Oh, right there. Yeah. Again, sometimes those knees just buckle a little bit. Certainly hope that young man's okay. From the 22, handoff going to Loveless here. He'll pick up about four before he is brought down by Max O'Sullivan. Yeah, we're really it's it's been predominantly loveless tonight in, in the backfield as far as getting the getting the carries. And I understand why. Second down and seven here for the Trojans. Heilbrunn throwing deep down the middle of the field. Oh, and it is incomplete. Had Tomzik open and put it right on him, but Tomzik not able to look it in. And the Knights dodged a bullet there. That one looked like it was going to be and should have been complete. Tomzik just not able to reel it in. Maybe up a little higher than you'd like, but still obviously very catchable ball there. Maybe a third down and long now. Down to a minute 29 to go in this first half. Wyzetta leading at 10-7. Heilbrunn stepping into the throw here and it is incomplete. Defender might have had the, the best opportunity at that one as he tried to go to Milkas there. So, so Wyzetta got the ball back with a nice defensive stop and seemingly enough time to do something with it. But now they're in the face of fourth down and presumably have to punt it away here. So both teams defensively coming through. Westermeyer will punt here for Wyzetta. Long been waiting back deep around his 40. So I'm going to give him too good of an opportunity on a return here. Good rush up the middle, but he gets it out of there. Going to be a short kick and no chance for Long to field it. Trojans will down it at the Knights 46. On a 30 yard punt, no return. STMA football with a minute 18 to play here in this first half. See how aggressive that they'll be here. Cardell unofficially four for 11. Throwing the football so far.
I'm sorry, make that three for 11. Quick drop, firing here, and it is incomplete. Again, well covered. He tried to go to Damaris there. Most passing plays, Wyzetta defenders have been in very good position, other than the obvious big exception was the touchdown on the little wheel route out of the backfield for Long Gun. So second and 10 for St. Michael Albertville. Bardo looking deep downfield and incomplete. Again, pretty well covered as he wanted to go to Long Bend, but that one really didn't have much of an opportunity and was not close to being completed. Bring up a third and nine at night, I think. It might more situationally than anything, but maybe going to the air a little bit more than they would like in a couple of these situations. They hand it off to Anderson and nowhere to go as Cherney pops him. No gain. See if Wyzetta might use a timeout here. Yeah, they are going to. Yeah, you never know. You get the ball back and maybe get something to happen on a return or so. Lambert Brown using a timeout. We'll be hearing from the coaches at halftime as Ryan has made his way down here from the booth. And shortly after knee surgery, we had to send Ryan just a little bit earlier. He's, he's moving pretty good, but. Groves coming on to punt here for the Knights. Was that a kind of showing block here? They've got 10 guys up on the line of scrimmage. Stepping in. Right? Now we have an illegal substitution here against Wyzetta. They have too many on the field, it looks like. Yeah, I was going to say, no wonder it looked like the line was still stacked with players. <laughs> they had an extra. So they'll mark off five against the Trojans here. Their first penalty, though. High snap. Chase down, and pretty good job to get rid of it there by Groves. Yeah, that's. That's some grace under pressure there by Groves. A snap way over his head. He ran, picked it up, and got away a pretty decent kick under the circumstances. Actually, more than decent. And their bench giving him a pat on the head there. Took a nice big bounce from there. That's what really saved him. If that ball didn't take that nice hop, there was no way he would have been able to execute this as well as he did. But. You see, he gets his body squared up, turns around, and gets it out of there. That's that's a nice play. So football at the 20, and we understand the clock didn't really start immediately on that play either. So why is that getting a little extra time, maybe? Heilbrunn stepping up and he's going to be brought down right around the line of scrimmage there. 
tackle made by Drew Luster. Gain of a yard actually on the play. Heilbrunn looking to throw here. Fires and complete as he slings it out to They'll pick up the first down as he finds uh, Eli Lennart there for about 11. Oh, and Heilbrunn runs into the rush and down he goes as I don't think he saw Tyson Henches coming and Actually kind of fortunate to hang on to the football there. Trojans going to use their last time out. As you see, oof, boy, he really was lucky to hang on to that ball as he got hit from the blind side there. So why is that a, you know, yeah, you like to be aggressive, but at this point, time-wise and where you're at on the field, I think I would not try anything too crazy here. You don't want to hand the Knights an opportunity that they otherwise weren't going to get. Obviously, they've shown an ability, both teams really have shown an ability, though, to pop a big play here and there, so. Even though it is, you know, a pretty defensive battle and a 10-7 score, we have actually seen a fair amount of big plays offensively. You know, that 45-yard run earlier for Longman and that 28-yard touchdown catch he had, and we've seen Wyzetta pop a couple in the pass game and also Loveless running it. Albrin's throw here is complete. Nice little move there and then getting out of bounds. Not gonna quite be enough for a first down. Those are out to the 38, about three yards short, but still a nice pickup. But now they're gonna need a big play here. Run throwing and they get a big play. Griffith down the sideline. And he'll be brought down inside the 15 yard line. Seven seconds to play. Wow. Yeah, 49 yard pickup here. Now Wyzetta, ball on the 13. That's the good news. The bad news is only seven seconds to go. I have to wonder if they might take one shot here and then think about kicking a field goal if they don't presumably might have time for two plays at maximum. Can't afford to be sacked or catch it in bounds though. Throw over the middle, nearly intercepted. Bretker getting up. Got his hands on it, but couldn't bring it in. So two seconds to go. And I think Wyzetta is going to send the field goal team on here. As Stevie will come on to try the field goal here. This would be about a 30-yarder. Obviously knocked one through earlier in this quarter from 26. Plenty of leg on this one again, and his kick is good. So as we reach halftime, Wyzetta with a couple of field goals in the quarter. Stevie proving to be a weapon for the Trojans as he bangs through the field goal with no time remaining on the clock to give Wyzetta a 13-7 edge here at halftime after the good opening drive for the Knights. Wyzetta will take a lead into halftime of this one. So a good second quarter for the Trojans. They trailed at seven nothing heading into quarter two, but put 13 on the board to that touchdown pass from Heilbrunn to Griffith and then 
couple of Stevie field goals giving the Trojans an edge uh, by six here over the Knights at halftime. Let's go down to field level now with Ryan. Hey, Coach, you know you're not happy giving up points there right before the half. What did you see in the first half that you did like? Uh, we made a few throws on that first drive and, and popped a few runs. Um, you know, we, we got a few injuries, so some of our personnel stuff is, is kind of a hodgepodge. We're going to have to get organized and make sure we got the right 11 on the field each time. Uh, so hopefully we can piece it together and uh, find a way to make some plays in the second half. You got a new quarterback, Bardo, threw his first touchdown pass. What did you see the, uh, out of him that you like? Yeah, it let a good drive on the first drive, but we got to make some throws. Uh, they're really stuffing the box, daring us to make some throws, and we're going to have to win some of those battles on the outside. Last thing, uh, defensively, what do you want to see different? Well, we, we got to hold up in coverage a little bit better, um, you know, especially in the in the two-minute drill there. We uh, need to get to our landmarks and our zones and uh, play with zone eyes and uh, be a little bit a little bit more disciplined with some of our our, uh, our landmark drops. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Back to you, Jay. Thanks, Ryan, and thanks to Coach Esler, as always, for taking the time. We'll hear from Lambert Brown on the way back in. Playoff football here, the start of the 6A playoffs. Our halftime score, it is YZ 13, St. Michael Albertville 7. First half highlights, stats, and more football coming up here on CCX. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Welcome back here to St. Michael Albertville. Along with Ryan Iverson, I'm Jay Wilcox. Wyzetta leading STMA 13-7 here at halftime of this first round game in Class 6A football as we check out some highlights from the first half. And a good start for the Knights. After Well, after they'd had a what seemed to be a tough start, they got a couple big plays, including this touchdown. What a great play call. A little play action. They run the running back, Long Van, out of the backfield wide open. Great play. So they had the 7-0 lead fairly early in the game. They led 7-0 after one. Wyzetta fumbling on a fourth down yeah. play there. Recovery made, but the Knights didn't do much with that. Loveless overall had a very good yeah, first half in their line as well. Yeah, he just runs with that good mix of patience, speed, and power. And that's what set up that. You know, this touchdown pass here to Griffith was being able to run the ball effectively on that drive. Good hands to haul that in on the slant. Here's another big yeah. gainer for Griffith here. This one went for 35 for the Trojans. Yeah, and you feel like, you know, Wyzetta with 13 points maybe could have had more. Here was a nice field goal, but, you know, moving the football, just not able to necessarily finish those drives. Then late in the first half, they get another one. Knights kind of a lapse in coverage. This was very late in the yeah. half, and Griffith kind of roaming free down the sideline. At least they got yeah. back and forced him out and forced another field goal attempt yeah. from Stevie, which he knocked through with uh, as the clock expired there to make it that 13-7 margin. It was a great route design. They ran two receivers deep down the field and then Griffith on that cross. And uh, and you can see, look at the passing yards for YZ, 140 already at halftime. Yeah, they've had the edge overall and uh, nine first downs of three. Only one penalty each team and then that fumble, which proved to be pretty inconsequential, yeah. was really the only only turnover in the half. So we'll take a time out here, come back with more. Ryan's gonna head down and talk to Lambert Brown, the Trojans head coach here. It is 13 to seven at halftime. The winner will probably face Rosemount next week. And the loser will be done for the season, of course, here as the Knights band performs here at halftime. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. 
Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Welcome back. Looks like the concession stand doing some good business here tonight at St. Michael Albertville High School. The Knights trailing Wyzetta by a score of 13 to 7 as the team's coming back out, getting set to prepare for our second half. And let's go down to field level where Ryan is joined by Lambert Brown. Coach, down 7 nothing early. You got to love how your guys came back and responded, especially offensively. Well, you know, it was good. the sideline demeanor was good. There wasn't any panic, and they kind of knew it's a long game. We got to keep playing, and we've been in these situations before. You know, it's a long season, and so um, I think they responded really well. Huge to get some points before half, yeah. and we know when we're getting the ball back right now. So. Yeah, last time you played these guys, they got the big play before half. That time you guys get it. I, I always talk when we're watching you guys play. If you pound the rock, it sets up your passing game so well. Is that going to be the plan in the second half? Keep pounding the rock? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. You know, when uh, our receivers are playing well, Cole's yeah. throwing the ball really well. Ford's having a heck of a game on his birthday, kicking butt, and he's ready to play. So, not a better birthday present than a win in the playoffs. Gotta go get him a win now. All right, good luck, coach. Right, thanks. You. Back to you, Jay. Thank you, Ryan, and thanks to Coach Brown. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, we are partnering tonight with the Wyzetta Booster Club to be able to bring you this coverage live tonight on CCX. Uh, they have uh, graciously helped out with that. So thanks to all the parents, sponsors, and the community for supporting YZ Athletic Boosters, who support the student athletes. Their mission is to sustain and promote ongoing participation of YZ High School youth in quality athletics. And they would also like to thank their many sponsors, which includes Kelly Brown Real Estate Group, Keller Williams, Twin Cities Orthopedics, State Farm Agent Katie Halpin, and the Brost Clinic in YZ. Thanks so much to the YZ Athletic Boosters for stepping up and helping us to get this game on live tonight here on CCX. We'll take a timeout as the teams get their stretching in. We'll halftime activities here in the third quarter just about to begin. We'll be right back here to STMA. And we get set for half number two, as Lambert Brown said, his Trojans will get the football too, so they'll try and carry that momentum from yep. late in the uh, second quarter here into the third as Jared Timlin gets set to kick it off. Jay, every time I head to the sideline before halftime, the last minute, there's always a big play. Every single time I've done it. So the streak continues. Booted deep here and fielded on about the one yard line. Good speed. Yeah, you can see him. Yeah, Milka says, yeah. can run a little bit. He's not the biggest guy out there, but so Wyzetta getting the football for their first possession of the second half here. You know, it's only a one score game, but doesn't it just feel like the momentum and the rhythm is on Wyzetta's side, right? They've been able to run the ball pretty consistently, throw in as well. And this is just one of those things where Coach Brown has talked all year, like we can't have a turnover, we can't have bad things happen, we can't beat ourselves. Now I don't anticipate much of a change offensively from what they did in the first half. Loveless on the carry, stopped after a pickup of about three, as he went over 100 yards unofficially yeah. in the first half on 16 rushes. So you were talking about earlier how they you know, a lot of times we'll use a couple, two, even three backs, but it looks like they've kind of settled on yep. riding him as much as they can here tonight. Yeah, and he, I mean, he came in just under 800 yards on the season, nine touchdowns. So he's been their leading rusher, but they really have used that three-headed approach, and it's worked well. And you got fresh, fresh backs at this time of year. Out over the 35 to about the 37, and obviously we got to say, you know, hats off to the that line has been. Yep. 
pushing things and creating gaps for him as well tonight. It isn't just the back. Who was the big running back when they won the state championship that year? Do you remember the name? He used to get 40 to 50, sometimes like... Christian was his first name, yeah. but I'm drawing a blank. But I can't he, he believe I'm kinda, drawing a blank on his last name. Kind of reminds me a little bit of, of Deion Loveless, just getting better with more carries. And look at, this, look at this strength. Wow, he trucks over Mason Mogard right there. Wow. <laughs> you want to you wanna tell, you know, do something that'll fire your team up? Is that kind of stuff. You finish a run like that, there was no tiptoeing around that. He lowered that shoulder and just, bam, got the first down. It looked like he was going to be short there, able to just get, keep those legs moving, get positive yards, keep the chains moving. Christian Vassar. Yes. <laughs> Thanks to the help from the truck there. I just drawn a blank. It's not like it was that long ago either. But <laughs> Rutger, a nice stop there for the Knights. But I, I love that with Coach Brown. It's like we, we got something that's working. We're going to keep doing it. And you remember that year, Christian Vassar just seemed to get better and better as the game kind of wore on. And, uh, you know, he had a great line as well. This line really has come together this year. And a lot of new faces, but they've gotten the experience and got to run the football in the playoffs. And they've certainly done that tonight. Back to Loveless that time. They went low on him there as Josh Sigler getting to him, bring him down after a, well, no gain, it looks like, on the play. You know, the other thing, too, Jay, is, is Wyzetta hasn't been in third and really long that much tonight. You know, we've seen him, you know, done a couple of their games. You've seen penalties or loss of yardage on first and second down. They've kind of stayed in this third and manageable range. Pressure coming and throwing deep over the middle. It's popped up and oh. all then caught. Wow. Ruffles with the catch. Johnson then knocks it away and looks like the Knights might have it. They do. What, what a crazy play all the way around. Popped up in the air. Griff of the catch. And then he is rocked by Caden Johnson and forced to fumble and it's a turnover. But for us, it was, it, you know, looked like, I think it was Lenort that was going to have that. And then a big hit. Ball bounces straight up into the air. Look at the hit. Look at the concentration by Griffith. And then the one mistake is I don't. he didn't see Johnson no. there, and he kind of angled he, yeah. right toward him. And he wasn't able to get two hands over that ball. That was a great job by Caden Johnson coming in there, going for the ball, intentionally going for it. Little reverse action here oh, he with got Longman, room. and he's got some space to go. Cuts it back and then thrown down. Tackle there by Westermeyer. I just still can't get over that last play. That's just the sequence. And I'll tell you what, I like it. You get a turnover, and you go come back immediately with a big play. They come with the reverse, and you love to see your quarterback out front leading and big gain. Now you got that momentum back. But this was just an amazing play. I mean, great concentration by Griffith. Watch his hand-eye there to go get that. And then you're going to see there's 13. There's Caden. Watch him come in and just with that right arm rips that ball out. Not only that, but he pops up and recovers it, too. That was just a heck of a sequence. From the 44, Bardo wants a little screen. Got the pass away just in time. Wyzetta recovering after uh, earlier. Looked like it was going to go for a ways there. As uh, Brett Roos on the catch. Yeah. yeah, nice little design. Again, use that aggressive pass rush. It's an easy, safe throw for your quarterback. And I'll tell you, I mean, we just talked about it, right? You know, turnovers are the one thing that can kind of stalemate a, a, a game like that. And Wiesel gets that big play, ends up being a turnover. Now the Knights seem to have a little bit of momentum. Second and three here, just into Wiesel territory. Here's Anderson running it, keeps the legs driving. Yeah. All of them hog ties him there and brings him down, but it'll be enough for the first down and then some. Yeah, and really nice push up front that time. And sometimes a spark like that, that's all you need to kind of fire yourself up and getting a good push there. Sam Anderson, only a sophomore, runs really, really hard, too. He had a big game against the uh, Trojans earlier in the regular season with the long touchdown run. So first down at the 44 of Wyzetta, the toss back. Roos yeah. is hemmed in and nowhere to go, and he'll lose a yard or two. Yeah, and Watkins isn't going to get credit for, credit for a tackle there, Jay, but... He really got up the field and just set that edge. Nowhere for Roos to go. And that's just good team defense, good penetrating, good pursuit. 
Yeah, when usually when you can get a back to have to, you know, stop, stop his feet. While everyone else is running down the line. Yep, it's a... Uh, it's one of those drills that you do it every day in practice. You, you feel like it's so old, it's repetition. But that's exactly why you do it right there. Second and 12 now for the Knights. And they go to Longman, oh. and he has popped immediately there by Watkins. Oh, look at the strength. Strength and quickness. Watkins just sheds his block. And he was waiting for Connor Longman right at, actually behind the line of scrimmage. He just looks like a beast to block. 6'4", 220, yeah. and he soundly defeated that block and met him right at the handoff point. Well, you said it first play, one of the first plays when he made a play, he won that collision. Guess what? He won another couple of collisions on that play. Third and 13, STMA now going backward just a bit after a couple nice plays for them. Bartle dropping the throw. And gets it to Swinkiewicz. Yeah. He is brought down by Hart and will be about two to three yards short of the first down. Yeah, nice throw that time. Quick decision. Watch him plant. One, two, three. And an accurate throw, too, in traffic. That's not always an easy throw. That's just knowing where your receiver is going to be, timing. And you got to think they picked up enough on the short field here that they're you got to think they're probably going to go for it. Maybe you go for a hard count, see if you can get a, you know, the five yards that way. Got fourth and four here at the 38 of Wyzetta. Bardo play action. Stepping and throwing deep down the sideline for oh. Longman just out of his reach. Again, well covered. Two yeah. guys there, although there was just a tiny Bartle window, and that was incomplete. not at all far from being a completion. Well, However, it goes over on downs to Wyzetta. Yeah, I mean, well covered, but great ball placement, too, to the outside and deep, and just literally maybe a half a foot. Great effort by Long Van, but great coverage. And for the most part, Wyzetta done a really nice job of staying deep, not letting anyone behind him. That would have had to be a spectacular throw and catch to complete. So Wyzetta gets it at the 38. And handoff and plenty of room to go up the middle there for Madcor as he'll be into Knights territory. They trade big plays here a little bit back and forth. 16 yard gain there. Yeah, and a little bit different stylistically, right? But in, in the biggest thing, Jay, is Madcor's fresh, right? He hasn't gotten a carry since I think the first quarter. So, you know, there's something to be said about, you know, defense is starting to get worn down. You're getting pounded on, and, and now you bring in a fresh running back. Play action this time, and oh. too high for Griffith. Yeah. There's going to be a yeah. flag. He had a lot of hands on him. Knights protesting that the ball was already over. But it looks like it's going to be a pass interference call on St. Michael Albertville. I'll tell you what made that throw hard is the linebacker got good depth. That seam wasn't there. And I think they're going to call contact before. Yeah. yeah. The timing of that got thrown off just a little bit. That was one of the first times tonight that play action didn't open up that lane. And because of it, 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 it appeared that uh, Heilbrunn had to kind of hold it a half a second later. That might have added to the, the, the contact. Madcore takes the handoff here and keeps oh, going. My. Breaks out of there, but then is cut down. Nice tackle <laughs> in the open field there by Sigler. Otherwise, that one yep. was going to go for a, a much better gain even. And you can see Madcore patting the, the turf. He knows he was very close to breaking that for a big gain. Like he was into the middle of a pile here, but he just ran through that first tackler. Yeah, right there he knew he almost was able to turn that outside. Incomplete there. Nearly picked off. That was a, a great read on the jump in the play by Sigler. And Sigler's a really good cornerback. He's athletic. He's got great size, too, for a cornerback. So third and six here for Wyzetta. 4.55 to go in the third. Trojans up 13-7. Kind of a big swing drive here. If they were yep. to score here, really extend that lead. But if the Knights get a stop, they're obviously still very much right where they want to be. Loveless back in there, takes the handoff. 
He'll be knocked down short of the first down. Bretker hanging on down low and then got some help. Yeah, and I like that call, Jay. Instead of throwing and trying to get the first down, maybe your short field, you pick up a good chunk of that. Now you have a, a fourth and, and much shorter. Fourth and two. High snap, but he gets the handoff to Loveless, and that yep. surge will be enough. As they push inside the 20. Gain of about four on that play for Wyzetta. That's a nice feeling when you count on your old line there. There wasn't, you know, like a big hole per se, but they just got enough push. And you trust we're going to get push, and you can see it was a slower play, but great patience. And then he's got that little burst, Jay, where he just kind of lunges forward. And, you know, he's going to be able to get you two or three yards. Madcore coming back in now. First down at the 20. Madcore takes the handoff here. Following a good block, and he rips off another 10 or so. See if it'll be enough for the first down. It looks like it will be. He's right at the 10. And you're seeing the substitutions here. Instead of the whole series, they're going a couple of plays and switching. So you get each running back a little bit of a breather, get some water, and you come back fresh. And they're finishing their runs off. Really nice. And I'll tell you something to keep an eye on, too. If they go back to the play action, Charlie Tomzik, the tight end, the big tight end at 6 2 has been really good in the in the red zone. Madcore takes the handoff here. Bradker coming up to meet him. He'll pick up two or so, maybe three. So it'll be second down goal to go here for Wyzetta. The kind of drive that can be a little demoralizing yeah. for the defense too here. You take you know a fair amount of time, you're getting kind of hit up the gut. And, and you get worn down, you get tired. You get it's a physical game when you're running the football like this. And off to Madcore, makes a little cut, trying to get out of a leg tackle there. He'll be brought down though, just inside the five. Yeah, good, good footwork. He made two guys miss, two different cuts there. It looked like it might be a loss. Ended up still getting some positive yards. We're going to have third and goal here from the five. And really, I think a big, big series here. If the Knights can somehow hold, keep this a one-score game, it's really, really big momentum-wise. Loveless takes the handoff, oh. and he'll walk in for the touchdown. Nice drive for the Trojans, and Loveless finishes it off. A nice gap opened up there, and they were able to run it in without having to really do anything too tricky. Just run it right at them. Yeah, you know what's coming. And again, fresh running back into the game. He finished that run. He hit it hard. Is that a crowd loving it? And you got to feel good if you're a Trojan going up multiple scores the way your defense has played against the Knights' offense tonight. You got to feel pretty good about that. That was a heck of a drive. Yeah, let's think they're, they're going to go for two here. Yeah, it yeah. appears so. Try to make it a 21-7 yep. game. They kind of don't want to have to use the timeout here, as it looked no. like there was a little bit of confusion about if they're going for two. Yeah, and you, you got 10 seconds left on the play clock here, so you're going to have to hurry. Heilbrunn's going to hand it back to Loveless, and he will not get there. And yeah. Wyzetta, I think, um, maybe would like to have that one to do over again, just in terms of getting maybe even taking a timeout, or it looked like they were kind of having to rush it. Yeah, nice block by Tomzik, the tight end, kicking the guy out there on the inside. Great job up front, too. Those guys have done a great job of giving Loveless just a seam, right? Enough seam to get to that second level. Really well blocked. So a 19 to 7 lead now for Wyzetta. They finish the drive, but then unable to get the two point conversion. And so the Trojans, after spotting STMA a 7 0 lead, coming back strong here. Well, and what it does too, Jay, is it, it's forcing an offense that's kind of struggling and a new quarterback to feel like you got to strike quick, right? And, and it can sometimes lead to. To mistakes, so you, you got to be careful here if you're the Knights. You don't have to hurry, yet. you still got enough time, but you got to pick up first downs. Anderson struggled to pick that one up a little bit, and he'll be brought down at about the 11 or 12 yard line here, so not great field position. And interesting, 
I think I know the answer already, but any thought if you're as teammate of going back to your former starter at quarterback? Because Bartle, I mean, he hasn't had a great night, let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly an option. I, I think, you know, at this point, you got I think you got one more drive. You see what happens here. If it's a three and out, you know, and it's it's no rhythm. Because you got to remember, you know, Damaris had a nice game against Wyzetta in the regular season. Had a lot of passing yards. So something to keep an eye on here. But you just you got to get a spark and you got to get first downs. Anderson taking the handoff here just out over the 15. The other thing, too, Jay, is we, we've seen a lot of shots from Bartle down the field, right? Deep shots. We saw him throw on that last drive a quick slant. He was accurate with that. So even just going to some shorter, medium, intermediate throws, I, I would like to see that rather than, than taking the shots down the field. Yeah, I feel like they have thrown a lot of high-risk passes. Not necessarily risk in terms of being picked off, but just hard to complete. Yep. A little counter action here. Long been popped by Cherney and the rest of that YZ defense converged on him yep. pretty quick. They were not fooled by that. It's the first time we've seen that look tonight. Yeah, the Knights hit that those counters a couple of times in the first game, so you know that was a, a point of emphasis on this Trojan defense is to not over-pursue. And they were there. They were waiting for it. Got about a yard there, so third and medium now, third and about five coming for the Knights here as we tick toward the end of this third quarter. And also, they're not in great field position here. You hate to have to punt from this deep. Bardo, play action, had time. Now it breaks down. He's going to try and run it around the edge, but he cannot get to the corner. Good pursuit there by Ryan Kessler. Well, great pursuit. I thought Bartle had some room there to run and maybe get to the outside and get a first down with his legs. But, God, that was just great pursuit by Kessler. Good speed. And that's exactly what you wanted if you're a Trojan defense. You got a big score. Now you get a three and out in a short field. And if you're the Knights, you got to figure something out here offensively. Got to get some type of rhythm. Good pressure up the middle. I mean, that, look at Kessler just close on that like a rocket. Groves on the punt, high but short. And it takes a bounce back toward the line. Now it turns around and goes the other way, and it'll be out to about the 39-yard line. So Wyzetta, you couldn't ask for much more other than maybe a block or something, but they'll get it with seven seconds left in the third. They're already up 19-7, to seven and they'll have it at the 39 of the Knights. Yep, good complimentary football. Your offense sustains a long drive. You take a bunch of clock off, you punch it in. Now your defense got a chance to rest and feeding off that momentum. I mean, it's just crazy, Jay, how, how special teams, offense, defense, they just play off of each other. And we saw on the sideline just the, the great congratulations they were giving Kessler. It's nice to see when you get plays from positions or guys that you don't necessarily expect all the you know the glory to go to is that one yeah. just incomplete yeah and if, if somehow if Griffith is able to catch that one-handed he's gone you would see the Knights really loaded the box there expecting run and they hit him with that play action slant just a little bit high otherwise that would have been six Griffith knows it wasn't too far from being a catch yep. there but I, I, I like I, what I'm seeing, Jay, a little bit that's that's a little different than we didn't see in the first half. Brutker there is getting a little bit more depth on his drop from that middle linebacker. Loveless powering straight ahead for four. And that's going to bring us to the end of quarter number three. So Wyzetta keeps the momentum. They get a one touchdown late in the third. And our score heading to the fourth. It is Wyzetta 19, St. Michael Albertville 7. The fourth quarter is up next. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV.
Welcome back. The night had some to cheer about earlier, but not he even as looks. Much he as looks the sad, game. doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. It's uh, Wyzetta's kind of slowly but surely put their grip on this game. It feels like, yep. and they have a chance to even increase the lead now. Heading in the fourth quarter, they'll face a third and about six. Yeah, the Knights need a big play defensively. Can they get a, a, an interception, a, a sack, fumble, something to just kind of spark them, right, and, and get their their belief back? You almost feel like it's just been slowly drained away from them. So they big, big, big play here for the Knights on defense. Third and six from the 35 of STMA. Heilbrunn's throwing deep downfield. has got a man, and it's a touchdown. Trojans breaking it open as he's able to hit Milkis down the sideline. I think the Knights might have been looking run there a little bit. Well, not only that, but the play action, everything's been those short slants too, Jay. And Milkis, we talked about him earlier with that great speed. That was just, that, that was a perfectly thrown football too. A great route. And you get that one-on-one -on -one coverage and as a, as a D-back, you've seen slant, 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 slant. You kind of veer in to take that away and all of a sudden Milkis is running by you. It's a, what a great throw too. Stevie on to attempt the extra point and it is good. So with 11.54 to go in the fourth, Wyzetta now leading it 26 to seven. Yeah, you see the, the Trojan sideline fired up, but this this is just a great play. And again, look at all that. So there's no help, no safety over the top. So if you get beat on that, you got nothing behind you. And a great ball. It, it was angled where we could see it, Jay. I mean, he just he led him absolutely perfectly. And the minor detail that helps that too is a good play action fake. You got to sell it as though you're yep. really going to hand it off. And the thing is, I mean, we've seen when Wyzetta struggled, it's because they haven't been able to run the football well. And what happens then is the defense can keep those two safeties back because they're not worried about stopping the run. And then it, it affects their passing game. But when you can run the football, control that line of scrimmage, then it, it just sets up everything else that Wyzetta wants to do. This kick will be into the end zone, so no chance for a run back here for Long Ben and... The Knights have their work cut out now, trailing at 26-7 here early in the fourth. Yeah, and you feel like two ways out of that first half, you know, they drove the ball in their first possession, fumbled on fourth down. And then, you know, just not great offense, but this second half you feel like they've just slowly been able to just wear the defense out and really just kind of control that line of scrimmage. And now if you're the Knights, you I mean, you're, you're thinking – you can, we got We got to make big plays here. We can't afford to chip away a couple yards at a time. We got to take shots. So first down on the ten for Bartle and the Knights. Going to go with a quick handoff to Anderson, and he pops through there before being wrestled down, just short of the thirty. Give him nine on the yep. play. Yeah, nice call. We haven't seen that tonight. Kind of a quick trap right up the middle. And if you're Wyzetta, you're just saying everything is, we're keeping everything in front of us. We will give up eight, nine yards, but we're not giving any big plays. Nothing over the top. Bartle dropping to throw, and well defended by Hart. Try to go to Swinkiewicz. Yeah, not a bad throw. He put it about where he had to. It was just really well defended. I've been really impressed with the secondary yeah. for Wyzetta tonight. And they, you know, SMA really had success throwing the ball in that first game. So you, you got to think the secondary really kind of said, hey, we're not letting that happen again. And to your point, they, they've been right there in coverage and have not allowed anything easy and nothing over the top, too. Third down in the yard here now. We've got a fullback. Leading the way through here, Anderson pushed back. I think he might have gotten enough, though, with that initial push to uh, move the chains here. I think he did. Yep. Well, and that's all set up the way Anderson runs. When you run hard like that, your momentum's going to carry uh, forward a little bit. He didn't pick up much, but just enough for that first down. And for the Knights, you got to keep that chain moving. you got to keep getting first downs here. Yeah, they don't have much room for error now. I mean, they, they have to be efficient time-wise and everything, too. Bardell, pump fake now, going deep with it. Kind of a jump ball, and Swinkiewicz has it. 
A little underthrown, maybe on purpose. A little back shoulder look there, and he's able to drop it in for the completion. Yeah, and so Kavich did a great job of coming back for the ball and made a play on the ball. And that's where, as a cornerback, you got to get that head around. If you get your head around, that could be an interception, but a nice pump fake, trying to hit it underthrown. Just a nice job of coming back to the football there. 32-yard gain. Now Bartle's going to have to run it. Ooh, and he slides down just as Ullum came in to make the stop. Some of the Knight fans grumbling. I think I, fair to say at NFL level that's an automatic oh. penalty and probably not as much in high school when he's running the ball, even though the Knights thought it should have been. Yeah, Bartle's a good athlete. You see he's got good speed. Mm. Well, I wouldn't have argued too much if that one drew a flag. Bartle rolling oh, out. Now he oh. touches it and he fumbles. He took a big hit. There's where you got to get rid of that ball. Mason Zimmer able to recover it, but he, he kind of didn't feel that he was, you know, realized he was out of time there and took a hard hit. Yeah, that's your blind side, and you got to kind of have that internal feeling, that internal clock. Getting good coverage there. Do it. Look at his eye. I mean, he's making the right reads, looking downfield, <laughs> but that's where you just got to throw it out of bounds. You got to know that people are coming from behind it. <laughs> that was a he take he took two shots here in the last two plays. But a heads up play there to just to stay on that and recover it by Zimmer. Official stopped and you know what I, th I honestly think he was checking on Bartle there. See how he was. Yeah, yeah. made sure that he didn't have anything that appeared to be like a concussion type hit there. Bartle dropping, now wants to set up a little screen, and Roos trying to break free. Couldn't quite get out of the grip of Richlick there. Richlick read that good. He was almost there for a loss on the play, but nice job by Roos just keeping those legs going, and now he set up the fourth and short. And right at the beginning of that play, of course, they kind of turned uh, Watkins free, and his eyes lit up. He's yeah. thinking, I'm going to clean sack here but he got rid of it just in time. Bartle's going to hand it off and not a bad play call at all right yep. there as they'll get down near the 10 yard line. Why is that a I don't think expecting that one. Acadia gets in and a little change of pace there. Really good speed. Acadia. Yeah nice footwork there. Good speed and Big call, a big, uh, big conversion. And that's what you need. You got to keep this drive going. You got to get get a touchdown. Got it at the 11. Bardo will fling it out. When Kavich was held up, penalty coming on Hart. Got a little bit too much into his body and a little grabby there. And it's going to be a first or a pass interference. Yeah, I mean, good position. That's where you just, you got to get your head around because you can realize that ball was not going to be caught. There's no reason to, to get your hands on him in the end zone. So half the distance penalty here. They'll push it down to up the six-yard line, I believe. Let's see, they haven't spotted it yet. Yeah, I just got the hand in there. Yeah, and anytime they put both hands in the air like that, like I didn't do it, it can trigger it too. They hand it off and stacked up a couple yards short of the goal line there is Long Ben. Picked up four yards. Really, not that it matters that much, but I really no idea why they would be stopping the clock on that play and the run yeah. up the middle. And they restarted it, but long been again. Let's see, did he get in? It looks like he's in. Yes, he is. Touchdown, Knights. A good push there up the middle by that old line. You see big number 60 there. Scrip on the floor. 66 was in there. Simple. Good job. And that's exactly what you needed for the Knights. You needed to get a score. Yeah, down 13. I wouldn't be surprised if they go for two here to try to get it down to a, a touchdown and a field goal. 
And that's what they're doing. They're keeping their, their offense on the field. Yeah, because getting it to 12 doesn't really do you any you know, good in comparison. Yep. You're going to... Boy, it, not only getting the touchdown, but doing it relatively quickly Quick, yep. was big for them. They, they still got time left. 8.04 to play in the ballgame. There with the handoff to Longvan, trying to get there. He will not. Ullum wraps him up and brings him down. You could tell he's a wrestler that time. He got his arms around him. And he had a hole there. The, they looked like more opening on the left side of the line of scrimmage. That play came right into the, the right side, right into the heart of white jerseys. There are just no gaps. And here's the touchdown. Good push up front. Can you see those legs moving? You see him turn his back, get his power, and Big score. So Longman started the scoring on that pass reception way back early in the first quarter. And now gives the Knights hope here at 26-13. They are far from out of it. Best offensive possession they've had really since the first half. Yeah. Yeah, really that first drive that they, they were able to score on. You wonder, too, at this point, I mean, do you, do you kick it? Do you go for an onside kick here and try to steal a possession? Especially the way YZ has been able to run the football today. And what you don't want is give them the ball and give up, you know, a six-minute drive here. You got to, and it does look like they might be going for the, for the onside kick. Timlin. Wyzetta certainly thinking it's a possibility anyway. That's where these 12 minute high school quarters change the yep. you know dynamic of you really can't count on getting the ball too many more times here. So it certainly at least an option to onside kick. You might also see him try and go over that first level and drop it yeah. in between. You know, take it on the ground and it's well fielded. Yep. Nice yep. work there on the hands team for the Trojans. So you get a number here breaking out of the pile. Looks like Griffith. it was Griffith. Yeah. Yeah. That was about one more roll from getting that bounce that that usually comes. And that's why onside kicks, you got to really kick the top. You got to drive it into the ground to get that ball up in the air. And it looked like I bet if it got about another yard further, it looked like you would have got that big oscillation where it goes up into the air. Well, you talked about earlier fielding punts, knowing people are going to hit you. How about onside fielding kicks an onside kick? Yeah. Yep. From the 49, they're going to throw on first. Oh, they had on, and Griffith yeah. not able to bring that one in. A little bit lower than yep. ideal, but still not too bad a throw. And I think they were hoping to catch the Knights, expecting, you know, run heavy to get that uh, little slant open. I'm kind of a yeah, quick hitter there. Great call. Just uh, just a little bit low. Otherwise, that, that would have gone for some big yards. Now second and 10 for Wyzetta. Going to go to Loveless off the left side here. Now cutting it back and keeps yeah. on going. Boy, they uh, got a good little seam. It didn't look like initially there was necessarily going to be all that much there. But he ends up getting about seven. Yeah, he just runs with great patience. Kind of, you see a lot of backs almost beat their linemen. You know, allow the play to develop, allow, allow the seams to be there. And he kind of slowed down and then he... As soon as he saw a little opening, he just, he's got that north-south cut really quick. And, yeah, it turns into a, a big gain there. Third down and three. Key sequence here for the Knights' defense. If they're going to have a chance, they need to get a stop. Back to Loveless, stumbled out of the gate there, and he's going to be close to the first down. Say, it depends where they mark that. Where? Looks like the spot will be good enough for a first down, I think. Yeah, the look. Yep. Yep, there's the signal, and he did get it. It looked like he kind of was stumbling as he took that handoff, but still got enough. Yeah, didn't get it much. But you know what that brings with it? You know, 40 seconds between every play, and you're going to at least get three more plays, and... If you're the Knights, you've got to start looking at that clock and how do we get off the field? How can we give our our offense another chance to, to put some points up? 
Nice thing here having a field with a play clock on the field. That's becoming more common, but certainly not standard by any means yet. Moisetta is going to try to milk that clock. Well, actually, they snapped it a little earlier than needed. Loveless bouncing off tacklers here. And he'll be brought down after a gain of just a couple. Here's where a spot where I, you know you know never want to say that you, you want to go down early or easy, but you don't want to be in a spot where you've got people ripping at the ball and you're standing straight up either. Yeah, I'm sure that was a discussion there before they came on the field. Is we got to get two hands on that football. Matt Core in there now in the backfield. He will take the handoff here and squirts through a hole up the middle, just tripped up. Leave him with a third and short. He's had a couple of runs tonight where he's very close to breaking them to, to home runs there. And again, that 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 fresh back coming in just it really helps Wyzetta just maintain that explosiveness when they get the ball. So it's going to be third and a yard here for Wyzetta. Time is the enemy of yep. the Knights right now as we're under 5:20 to go. And Wyzetta, I've talked about this in an earlier games. You know. This, it's almost better when you take it a little bit at a time and just eat up the clock here. And that's Madcore getting the first down without too much difficulty there. Ziegler able to bring him down, but right now the, the Trojans line is giving them confidence that we're probably going to be able to get three yards or four yards when we need it. Yeah, Halbrun did a nice job of getting that corral in that high snap too. That's the one thing right now that could, that could really turn it for Wyzetta is a turnover, a bad snap, a fumble, anything like that. And you can just see they're, they're patiently waiting. That play clock will get down to 10. And see the Wyzetta crowd starting to get some energy knowing that this one is getting closer and closer to victory. Madcore here trying to fight his way out of a tackle and wrapped up after a very minimal gain, if any. See if... You know, Knights start thinking about timeout usage here, too. Yeah, Luster in on the play. Yeah, second and long here. You got to think maybe if, if uh, STMA can get a, a short carry, a short gain here, maybe you start using that timeout. Loveless back in there, Madcore to the sideline. And off does go to Loveless, and he is stacked up. Nice job defensively there by Mike Anderson. Or I'm sorry, Vogel on the stop. Yeah, Vogel in there. Brutger again in there. Brutger's had a nice game at that middle linebacker position. Yeah, I thought maybe there that the Knights would use a timeout. At 3.30 here, could have stopped the clock at about 3.50 on third and long. I'm, you got to guess if you're Wyzetta, you're going to run the ball again. Either take more time off or force STMA to, to use one of their timeouts. They have all three remaining. A little bit of a high snap again. Loveless gets a handoff and he is into the secondary and will have the first down as he runs over a tackler again. Boy, the Knights, oh. that is exactly what they didn't need there. What power. What a power finish. They ran it to the right side, kind of the weak side of the formation there. And man, did he explode. Look at that speed right there, good cut. And then watch him finish that run. And that's that's confidence, that's also fresh, right? We, we've just sat out a couple of plays, got his legs, got his energy. Again, Halbrun did a nice job of getting that snap. But watch this finish, lower that, that shoulder. Caden oh. Johnson, I guess, will get the tackle, but he really kind of paid the price there. Yeah. Well, it's hard when you're the one waiting for a guy with all his momentum coming at you. Yeah, and, that, and that's big because now, again, you, you set up another chance to, to run a minute and a half off the clock. STMA now with only two timeouts remaining. Yeah, I mean, in some ways, that play could have been the clincher in, uh, for the Trojans. Yeah. 
Here we go. First down, Wyzetta. Loveless breaks oh a tackle, gosh. and he's going to walk in for the touchdown. Oh, what a run. It looked like there wasn't anything there, did it? He slowed down again right through that line of scrimmage, and then he just pops out of there like a rocket. And Wyzetta, fair to say that one might put the, the nail finishing in the coffin, touches. Yeah. Yes, 3.02 to go, and they go up 32-13. And again, took time off the clock. Nothing fancy. They all all the yardage through the running the football. I love it. He's had a heck of a game tonight. He's he's ran hard and he's done it a couple of different ways. We saw the power. We've seen some speed. We've seen good patience. And just a nice one-two punch tonight of Mad Cower and Loveless. Right there. It looked like there just wasn't much there. He just keeps those legs chopping and goes in a. Unimpeded right there. That's where you got to make that play. Runs through about four blue jerseys. Yeah, he's well over 100 yards for, for the day. Two touchdowns. You know, the other thing, too, when you can sustain drives like that, running the football, take time off the clock, you allow your defense to rest, too. So when they're coming back on the field, they're fresh. And that one's about nine Brilliant. yards deep. Stevie, a couple of field goals tonight. Been a great weapon in the kick and kickoff game as well. I mean, think yep. of those times when he was able to pin the Knights pretty deep. I mean, obviously, they covered him well, too, but... I like the way he, his placement on the ball, and that time he just yep. said, I'm going to drive it all the way through the end zone. And remember, too, if I mean, if you make a run and you get to play uh, at U.S. Bank Stadium, you're indoors, and kicking can make a big deal, a big difference in those games. Having the ability to, to kick a field goal. Bartle's going to hand it off on a draw play here. Long been trying to get to the edge. Pretty nice tackle there coming up to yep. meet him. By Boutwell. Yeah, not only that, but he kept him in balance, too, so you keep that clock running. At eight on the play. Bardo looking to throw and into a little traffic. Nice catch, though, by Longben. And he will have the first down after picking up about four, maybe five on the play. Yeah, nothing big, but I thought those short, shorter passes maybe earlier in the game, you know, Bartle, his first start tonight, give him a couple of those easy throws. You can see he's got a strong arm, and he's he's been pretty accurate, too, with the ball. Another toss over the middle, and he finds Damaris there, his first catch yeah. there, former quarterback starter. And a gain of about 15. Yeah, a good, nice job just planting that foot, seeing the field, and, and delivering a, an accurate football. On the 48. Ooh, rush coming. Bartle able to escape. Out near the edge, and he'll be shoved out of bounds as he's about to the 45 of Wyzetta, seven-yard pickup. Yeah, just a nice job eluding pressure there, kind of ducking underneath. I think that was Watkins that was getting pressure up there and duck under it, and then again, good speed by Bartle and, and got out of bounds. 2.16 remaining. If I said I hadn't scored that last touchdown, you'd yeah. we, right now we'd be kind of thinking like, oh, this well, is score so an onside uh -huh. kick, right? And, Bartle rolling left here as he's chased out of there and trapped from behind there as Richlick got to him. Looks like a flag down here. Is this a face mask perhaps? Is right. I wonder right if they're going to the say tackle. he got a horse collar or something from the back like that. Richlick has made a couple of nice plays like that. He's got good speed for a linebacker. They got a good group of backers, this Trojan defense. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. 
So it is indeed a horse collar tackle. Amber Brown puts <laughs> Brown. fired up right there. I don't know. I don't think that was at the official. I think it was more. Yeah, he was talking players. to his team. Yeah. yeah. Saying, let's go. And that's one thing, too. I mean, you got, you know, the, the outcome is probably in, not in doubt anymore, but you want to finish. That's been his motto all year. We got to finish. They've done a nice job of finishing tonight. Now he's saying, give me the last two minutes. Let's finish this game. Bardo, plenty of time now. He breaks right, throwing downfield for Longben. And again, the coverage stayed yep. with him pretty well, though. Yeah, nice job up front, too. He had the time. He was able to really kind of plant his feet and survey the field and good coverage downfield and tried to extend the play there. And He's had a couple of those throws tonight where they're just a couple of feet off. They've been close on a number of those deep balls, but just haven't been able to connect on them. Second down and 10 here for STMA. A minute 50 to go, but they're down 20. Rush coming. Oh, and that's going to be a face mask, I think, on Watkins. There's flags coming from everywhere. He reached out and <laughs> grabbed whatever he could, and it happened to be the mask. Yeah, which is too bad because it negates a great play by Kukowski. He was waiting for that screen. Yeah, really a clean game, too, Jay, most of the game here, and just uh, till these last couple of plays. A little surprised that they're calling that a five, five instead yeah, of a 15. Yeah. Yeah, you got to think, I mean, the way that the Trojans played here tonight, no one's going to want to see them, right? I mean, as a as a five seed or four, whatever they were, you know, they're they're better than their their four and four record. And if they can run the football tonight, like how they did tonight, they're going to be a team no one's going to want a piece of. Anderson sneaking through there, wrapped up by Rich Lick, or that one might have went for an even better gain here. Let's see where they'll spot him. A little shy of the first down. So it'll be third and a short three here for STMA. Longman taking it on the sweep. Bounces yeah. off a tackle, but then good pursuit defensively. He is going to have enough for the first down, though. Well, he had his momentum. He turned the corner and then just ran into a wall. Kind of bounced off of it and getting a second effort. Got, didn't get much, but got enough for the first. Met up with Will Ronning, who didn't get him down, but then the help arrived. So football on the 19, but we're going to take under a minute to play here before this ball snapped. Bardo now chased out, hit, gets rid of it. See if there's any receivers close enough here or there if they might pull a flag out. I don't think so. And Richlick again in the backfield, good speed. Is that flag? Mm, yeah, it looks like it is. This could be intentional grounding here. Yeah, yeah. I think it is going to be. Huh. I thought maybe he had rolled out of the out of the numbers there, out of the hashtag, but maybe not. Now they're going to discuss it. He was actually starting to make the call and then now getting together and say, okay, did you guys see anything different here? Was that receiver anywhere near? Sometimes you have to, you know, think a little bit too about did the hit alter where that throw yep. you know went to yep. i don't know I, at this point in the game i don't think why Zeta would be too upset if they picked this flag up here they might yeah yep. it is going to be picked yep. up i think that's the right call too it wasn't like they were bringing him down and he just had to get rid of it he was going into his motion he might have been outside the tackles that young man had a nice game griffith tonight in the in the receiving department. So second down and 10. Bardell swings it out. Longman again. Pushed out of bounds there by Hart. For Griffith's birthday. Not a bad birthday present. 
Hey, who is the Ross? Who is the Ross? I swear I'm sitting down. Yes, sir. Good birthday present. Now, let's, let me have a big game and let my team win. That's a happy young man. Third down play coming up here for the Knights. Ardell drops, throwing over the middle, and let's see, was it picked yeah. off? Did he get it? It looks like yes. Reagan. Noah Reagan able to secure the catch there for Wyzetta. And they'll be able to kneel it down and celebrate a victory here. Yeah, and those are tough to pick off. You're kind of in the middle of the field, all this traffic and commotion going on, and did a great job of just watching that one in, hit him right in the numbers. So Trojans football at about the four-yard line. Uh, we just need to run a couple of plays here. Yeah, you don't want to necessarily kneel there where you are, so you probably run one play, try to get a couple of yards, give yourself some space, and... And they are oh, going to go up yep. under center here. Timeout taken by YZ, actually. Happy group right there. Defensive group. They did they had a nice game. Gave, gave up that opening drive touchdown, but then really kind of hunkered down, didn't give the Knights much. And good complimentary football tonight, both offense and defense playing well. Interesting that why is that uh, using that time? I think they wanted to you know make sure everybody was sure what they're gonna do. It looks like a kneel down formation obviously here, and that's what they are gonna do. I doubt the Knights will use a timeout here. And they may not need to run another play. They were kind of looking sequence wise, like okay. The officials discussing now too. The quarterback asking, do I need to snap it again or are we good? And Kind of getting the word there. It looks like they do not need to. So Wyzetta is going to win this one by a score of 33 to 13. Happy with their performance here tonight after they trailed 7-0 after the first quarter. Kind of pretty much dominated the, the rest of the game. And uh, picking up a nice victory to, to go to five and four, and they're going to get Rosemount. To, he's had a really good year coming up in round two of the uh, Class 6A playoffs here, but a fine performance here by the Trojans tonight. Going to be a nice bus ride home for them as uh, they're able to put together a pretty complete performance overall. I mean, as Ryan said, you know, that defensive group we saw really did some good things. The offense, the line performed well. Loveless ran the ball hard. They had some nice uh, nice pitch and catch with uh, Griffith, especially having a big game receiving-wise and, and uh, a lot of things to like, you know, for a team that's been looking for consistency and to kind of put it all together. And they're going to get... Uh, to celebrate with that group of happy young fans over there too. Coming over to celebrate with them. So we'll take a little time out. 33-13 Trojans, our final. Ryan will be making his way down to grab a Wyzetta player or two. Wyzetta will advance to take on Rosemount next week. We'll be right back. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. 
our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. Happy group of guys in white jerseys here tonight as the YZ Trojans defeat St. Michael Albertville by a score of 33 to 13. Let's go down to the field now with Ryan and a couple of YZ guys. Hey, thanks, Jay. I'm with Dion Loveless. Dion, you were a monster out there tonight. How did it feel? Man, it was incredible. Hey, I want to give all the glory to the O line. You know, good things happen to great people. You know, great things happen to good people, you know? So I just want to give all my thanks to all my teammates. Hey, thank you for the entire YZ you know, opera operation. Thank you to the coaches. Hey, it's hey, it's all there. It's all them, not me. Well, I love the humility, but I got to tell you, some of it was you. <laughs> you, you I, I, I said tonight, you ran with great patience, but then when you got a hole, I mean, you exploded out of there. As, as a running back, you almost got better as the game went on. Did you feel like you were in a rhythm tonight running yeah, the football? I feel like, I feel like. Boom, boom. What you know about Dion? What you know about Dion? Hey, D nice. That's D nice. Hey, don't Dion, love oh my God. Dion, love it. Hey, teammates fired up for you. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Hey, um, you know what I'm saying? Um, when it's uh, when it comes to like you know patience and everything, you know you get better during the during season goes. You get better, you know, every single step, every single play, and you know every you know you know like I said, good things happen to great people. You guys played STMA earlier in the year, lost 28-21. How important was it for you guys to come in here on the road and make a statement and get a win, and most importantly, move on to the next round? You no, know, you know, last year we took a major loss against them in the finals, and you know, hey, as me, as part of me, I didn't play last year, but as me, I wanted to come back and you know keep that same energy and you know put my best foot forward and continue to go through. All right, question, one-on-one -on -one drill. You're going against Chase Olam, who wins that matchup. Oh Chase Olam for sure, man. <laughs> hey, he's a dog. He's a dog. Hey, I, hey all, all my props to the coaches. Hey, everybody, thank you. All right, congrats on the game. Congrats to Wyzetta. Back to you, Jay. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ryan, and congratulations to the Trojans. And uh, be safe down there, Ryan. Uh, we don't want you re-injuring that knee any, but uh, congratulations. A really happy group of guys right there. And, and like we said, it's been a little bit of an up and down season, but boy, you put it together at the right time, get a playoff win, and now go over and take a shot at unbeaten Rosemount in round number two. Thanks again to the YZ Boosters for helping to present the live coverage here tonight. Thanks to you for watching. And for Ryan Iverson and all of our crew, I'm Jay Wilcox. Good night from St. Michael Albuquerque, where Wyzetta defeats the Knights 33-13.